The ambush occurred as the Italian ambassador was traveling from the provincial capital of Goma in eastern DRC to visit a WFP school feeding program in Rochuru. Unidentified assailants opened fire on the ambassador's vehicle and shot at him. Ambassador Luca Atanasio died of his bullet wounds at a hospital in eastern DRC. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack yet. Eastern DRC has many rebel groups fighting over land, power and the control of mineral resources. Local leaders say the ambush happened on a road that had been earlier cleared for travel without security escorts. The DRC's foreign minister, Marin Tumba, has expressed her condolences to the Italian government and said she will ensure that the perpetrators are brought to justice. Chris Sochamringa, SABC News, Kinshasa. Well, for more on this uh, volatile situation in the eastern DRC, we're now joined via Zoom by Congolese human rights advocate uh, Kambale Musa Vuli. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Uh, welcome to the program. We've known that the eastern DRC, very volatile part of the country, and uh, these kinds of attacks, not uncommon. Uh, but it is, I guess, uh, quite unusual for a World Food Programme convoy to be attacked in this way. Indeed. I mean, the UN convoys have been attacked in the past. And beyond even the UN, if you look in the area, uh, just in North Kivu, in the past two weeks, uh, we have indications that over 30 people have been killed. Uh, it is quite saddening uh, to hear the death of the amb Italian ambassador, uh, Luca Natazio. Um, he's done tremendous work on the ground in DRC from everyone in our network. Uh, they have commended uh, his work. Uh, so it's a huge loss, uh, definitely for his family and for the Congolese community who believe in diplomats who could provide support to bring an end to the situation. I remember why he was there. He was looking at the humanitarian activities and projects by the World Food Program, uh, where last year it was declared that 22 million Congolese are the brinks of starvation. And the program he was looking at was around uh, you know, food uh, distribution and how it's actually helping the people on the ground. This road apparently had been cleared by security uh, as safe to travel on. What could this attack mean about A, intelligence, and also the assailants in the area? It is too early to really know uh, what unfolded in, in the area, as you clearly pointed out. Uh, the ambassador had clearance to travel. He had his uh, mission order that he did show at the airport. Uh, to the DGM, which is the security at the airport. He met with UN officials, uh, the MONISCO uh, security details, and the UNDSS uh, did have information about his travel to Uchuru, uh, and he was cleared. Um, he did not travel with a bulletproof vehicle. Uh, he traveled with his bodyguard for the Italian who also died and his driver. I mean, I'm just looking at the fact be, uh, beyond going to what actually unfolded, because we don't have eyewitnesses right now. Uh, we have the driver who was killed, the bodyguard who was killed, and the ambassador who was killed. And the level of international pressure, international action around this uh, is baffling me, uh, because this, uh, if you look at the situation, this is a crime, uh, a war crime to attack a UN convoy. Uh, so we will see in coming days, what will the action take place? But we have to put it in the context of the Congo. Mm. Congolese have been living this for the past two decades. Over six million Congolese have died, and they continue to die daily. Today, an ADF attack claimed the lives of five people, this month over 30 people. So to stop this type of killing to happen in the future, diplomats dying, we had if a UN group of experts who were killed in the Kasei region, uh, Michael Sharp, uh, Zaida Catalan, who were killing the Kasei region a couple of years ago, for that to end, the conflict in the Congo must end. And the perpetrator of violence, some of whom we know, should be brought to justice to end the culture of impunity. Until that is done, via a court, uh, that's a call for the Congolese, to have an international tribunal for the DRC to try the crimes that's taking place. If that does not take place, we'll continue to see these killings in the DRC. 
The DRC's interior ministry has accused Rwandan Hutu rebel group FDLR of being behind the attacks. How likely is that and who else might we be looking to in terms of uh, perpetrators? I mean, it's still baffling to me. That's why I say it's too early to say mm. who are the perpetrators. No one has claimed responsibility yet uh, for the killing. And if the Congolese government has the ability to have this level of intelligence for who killed uh, the diplomat in Italy, uh, they should be, have the capacity also to stop them. Uh, what we know in the eastern part of the DRC, we have many uh, rebel groups. For this attack, um, me looking at just the fact, I think it's very, it's too early uh, to say that a rebel group um, attacked him. We have to look at why was he there? Uh, who was informed? Why was the UN clearing uh, his travel saying that the road is safe? How come he didn't have uh, a UN uh, security detail after he met with them? So there are much more questions uh, before we say uh, that the Rwanda and F FDLR Hutu uh, extremists are responsible. Uh, there is accountability to be taking place. And I keep coming back to the Congolese. I mean, this is actually the voice of the Congolese now, uh, because they are saying uh, the world now know that the ambassador died. But Congolese don't get condolences when they are massacring a butcher mm -hmm. on a daily basis. So how do we make sure that if an Italian ambassador gets killed, uh, condolences are, are sent, uh, investigations are made, that when Congolese people are killed as well, we have the same type of response, that we say that Congolese lives also are valued. And if mm. we have that type of framework, uh, no matter who commits a crime in DRC, we'll be able to hold them accountable for the crimes they commit in DRC. Why do you think the uh, Congolese authorities have been unable to manage this part of the country and deal with these uh, uh, militants? Yeah, I mean, the DRC has known a war since 1996. Uh, this war started as an invasion. Uh, Rwanda and Uganda, U.S. allies on the so-called war on terror, invaded the Congo in 96, and they invaded the Congo again in 1998, um, and continue up until today, through numerous UN reports, continue up until today to support proxy rebel militias. This war in the DRC is really waged to take control of Congo's resources, some of the minerals uh, that's being pilfered illegally in DRC, I minerals such as coltan, cobalt, tin, gold. I mean, coltan is a mineral found in your cell phone. Uh, devices, electronic devices around the world. If, uh, last week, we celebrated having uh, the so-called uh, rover landing on Mars. That rover on Mars could not happen without Congo's minerals. So the destabilization of the Congo for the past two, two decades has been really about the control of Congo's minerals and the pilfering of Congo's minerals. And the Congolese have paid uh, the price. So the Congolese government is unable to control that region because there is a military force superior to the DRC that's not able, uh, that the DRC government is not able to stop. This is why even South Africa got involved in the uh, Second Congo War. This is why all the African nations also got involved uh, to bring about peace and stability in 2003, because it was very clear that Congo's neighbors were not uh, ready to stop uh, the war. But as they withdrew from DRC, uh, they continue to support proxy rebel militias there. You say that we have a Hutu uh, extremist FDLR. We also have uh, other Rwandan forces. The UN report of December of this uh, 2020 clearly put, uh, put in the report that the Rwandan defense forces are inside of the DRC in the North Kivu province illegally. That went to the UN Security Council. There is no outcry. We already knew in December that Rwandan soldiers are on Congolese soil illegally, and no action has been taken. And two months after this announcement of foreign forces in DRC, we hear uh, that a diplomat, a, an ambassador, has been assassinated. It's too early to know who committed that. Uh, we know the region has many proxy rebel militias. We know the path to peace in the DRC, to bring the stability, is through justice. And the justice that the Congolese people call for is the implementation of the UN mapping exercise report calling for an international tribunal for Congo to try the crimes of yesterday and today so that we send a strong signal 
that no one can commit a crime in the Congo without being held accountable. All right. Kambale, Musavili, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much indeed uh, for your insights this evening. Thank you. All right, that was Congolese human rights advocate uh, Kambale Musa Vuli speaking to us about the uh, situation in the DRC where the Italian ambassador to the country has been killed by unknown assailants to the east of the country. We'll keep following that story for you.